The financial system is completely overwhelmed right now. It began unfolding in what I refer to as the Financial Crisis Part 2 in September 2019's repo crisis. That was the activity that the central bank could not control. Throwing more money at it had no effect. The entire system runs off of the ability for the central bank to print as much money as possible and for governments around the world to use their currency for all transactions even when it doesn't make financial sense. Well, things are certainly changing. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. In the previous video I had done, I went on super long, so I cut out this part and I put it into this video. Now what's interesting about this one is that we talk about two interconnected topics. Number one, we're looking at the debt. The debt is so important because everything runs off of debt. A system that runs off of debt, and a lot of people don't get this, but it is just simply mad scientist level creations that they have decided to force us to use. All of the mortgages, the credit cards, every type of business running off of debt gets packaged up behind the scenes and sold off to investors within these derivative products. If one starts to break down, it affects everything else. That's why we had such a limited problem. The subprime crisis 2007 became something much bigger because it started to reveal all of that rotten, nasty garbage that was sitting underneath. There are many countries around the world, China and Russia being two very prominent ones, that want to do away with the US dollar. I talk about that in this episode here. There's a lot of other stuff as well. Let's get into it. Out of Bloomberg, more bailout cash won't stop a wave of credit card defaults. They make this laughable comment in here that we haven't seen a flood of credit card delinquencies that some predicted, but I'm not sure why they would suggest that because we haven't got into the worst part of this. Look at the stock market. It fell and what did it do? It went right back up. But you look at the economic aspects of this and it's a completely different story. Stores cannot even go through bankruptcy at this point without being able to liquidate inventory, without being able to go through the process of beginning to shut down the stores, to lay people off. That isn't something you just snap your fingers and gets done. We're talking about hundreds of stores in many cases. I've shown you that. I've shown you the data. How in the world do they even go through this? writing articles like this, spreading news like this, when they don't even sit down for a few minutes and look at the basic facts. But regardless, the point is that we are going to see big delinquencies, not just on credit cards, of course, but in all kinds of different debt. Catching up to credit card debt for Americans with credit card debt making minimum payments in the next three months may be affected by government aid and their ability to work. There's the breakdown if you're interested in seeing it, but I think it's interesting how we have relied so much on what the government can provide. And people are saying, yes, the government has to do it. The government has to fix this. The government has to print money. The government has to use their deficits. The government has to do whatever it takes to make sure that everything is fine. And we can agree on that if you'd like. But what happens to all of that debt to the deficits? What happens to all of that stimulus? Well, you've got a serious problem because you can't pull the stimulus out without it having a negative impact. And you can't just let the debt expand. We know what happens in those cases. So you have to pay it down. How do you do that? Well, you can't use the existing taxes that are there. It's not enough. You have to increase taxes. So we're talking about property taxes and sales taxes and every other tax that you can imagine. Taxes on this and that. Hidden taxes that will go in and increase the prices that you pay for things. And suddenly you figure, why did the electricity bill go up this time? I don't even know where this is coming from. Oh, that company, I hate them so much. I'm changing companies. Oh, that company is charging the same price too. And you look around and everything is increased in price and you say, well, I just can't figure it out. But if you only realized the actual policies that are put in place here that we talk about every single day on this channel are actually causing the issue in the first place and only becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy, digging ourselves deeper and deeper into the hole and we get these massive erratic crashes, booms and busts that take place. Well then, that's just too much truth. 
With all the madness that's been going on, we have seen the forgotten assets being gold and silver rising dramatically. Here you can see gold at the time of this recording at 2059 and silver on the right hand side 28 38 this you know these two right here have certainly gone up much higher just in the last little while as we have seen faith in this system deteriorate rapidly the system that has been put together that we have to deal with on a daily basis is unimaginable when you start to peel back the layers of all of it it truly is terrible in so many ways this is something that i wanted to highlight because we see those people every single day government do more government do more government fix this government fix that we've got to bail out the small businesses if you don't support the cares act you don't care if you don't support the patriot act you're not a patriot ppp loans to prc owned or invest entities wait a second an entire breakdown if you want to check it out for yourself talking about the fact that your tax dollars are going to entities owned or invested directly by China and this is okay in some aspects you can look at foreign investment and how it works and why it's important in certain cases to build up an economy but not under the PPP loans my goodness why in the world are they doing this why did the Federal Reserve give out 16 trillion dollars to entities all over the world and didn't even admit it they had to actually audit them in order to get that information look this is what goes on all the time people are saying we got to support the small businesses if you don't you're against the country you're this you're that but then you see this information coming out and of course nobody in the mainstream is even going to know about this you're not going to see the average person talking about this and yet it's so important big news going on right now because i've talked about this i've done so many videos about it and we've been outlining the aspects all throughout this period several years now china and russia ditch dollar in move toward quote financial alliance greenbacks share of neighbors trade falls below 50% for the first time. We're talking about serious moves. I've been talking about it this whole time. Back in 2015, you could see it was approximately 90%. So they had been saying this the whole period. They're saying, we're gonna go away from the US dollar, we're gonna go away from the US dollar. And you had so many people saying, yeah, whatever. But look at it. Dollar share of China-Russia trade settlements has dipped below 50%. They're doing it. They are in fact doing it. They are are using alternate currencies they're using their own currencies but simply going away from the US dollar both of these countries have begun to purchase gold over the years they have decreased their holdings of treasuries there's more than one reason for that of course but we see the trend it is very clear now geopolitically there are big problems major problems that are being highlighted and this right here is one part of that the bond king, Jeffrey Gundlach, had this to say about what we're seeing in the markets today after being at a 10-year high just weeks ago. The move index, a measure of expected future volatility of long-term U.S. interest rates, is now at a 10-year low. There it is again. Mount Whitney is near Death Valley for a reason. Many layers of meaning in this. Gundlach pointed out something that we need to pay attention to, not always looking at the VIX index, but the move index is one that I've talked about many times before. Essentially just showing you that we went from one extreme to the other, and that's never a good sign. This was also brought to me by a subscriber, Jeff Bezos. Cashes out $3.1 billion in Amazon stock, more than his total share sales in all of 2019. Now, every year he funds a spaceship company with a billion dollars, which he sells from his Amazon stock. I think his wealth increased by something like $77 billion in 2020 alone. So $3 billion, it's still a small sum. He does regularly sell shares. I don't think it's necessarily a warning sign at all, but it's certainly above average. There's no doubt about that. I wonder what he's going to do with it. I don't think it's a concern in one aspect. I'm just interested to see if there are any new developments in where he puts this money. 
There's an article here talking about Turkey and it has been a wild ride because Turkey's lira tumbled to its lowest level against the dollar as interventions by state banks failed to keep a lid on the currency's depreciation. There's more information here if you're interested, but it has been something to behold. I talked about this before. I talked about Argentina's currency when it was significantly stronger to the US dollar. And I said, watch that trend it's going down it didn't need to be a genius to figure that out it didn't need a crystal ball it was right in front of us many countries have seen this massive depreciation of the value of their currency versus the u.s dollar but look at what's going on to real assets right now gold and silver being one but for the people in these countries who have held on to for instance real estate they might be better off than somebody trying to hold cash I thought this was interesting. I wanted to bring it to you. Champagne is losing its fizz. For months, lockdown put the cork on weddings, dining out parties, and international travel. All key sales components for the French luxury wine marketed for decades as a sparkling must at any celebration. It wasn't something that I thought about, but it does make sense. If people aren't getting together and celebrating different events, there isn't going to be champagne there, right? At the bottom, they expect about 100 million bottles to be languishing unsold in their cellars by the end of the year. A lot of different companies are being affected by what we're seeing today. Manhattan developer deeply discounts unsold units in ultra luxury Peter Marino building on the High Line. We are noticing this particularly in Manhattan where the prices are actually going down. Not a lot of places have seen rapid deceleration, but this is one area that has actually seen some changes. You can't price things sky high at a time in which people are uncertain. If the sales are low and inventories are high, you've got a problem. Walmart brings the big screen to its parking lots starting August 14th. Now, I thought this was a diversification of what we're seeing in a particular company. They've obviously never done this kind of thing, but they looked at the situation. They've got a whole bunch of empty lots. They've got Walmart and every city around. Okay, what do we do? The resurgence of the drive-in movie, it may not get to where it was, let's say, 20, 30 years ago, but I think it could be interesting. People will feel comfortable going there because they're in their cars. It's relatively close by they can have some sort of nostalgia and i think at least on the surface level this could be smart if they do a very slow rollout it could be good for business i'm not sure all the details i'm not sure how they're working it out but i thought it was worth a mention and just wanted to bring it to you because the businesses today that adapt to the situation if they have certain assets if they have locations if they have a type of business which they can modify in a way maybe they can not only survive but they can thrive so look at that for other other industries, maybe you on your own in your businesses. Changes are happening today and we should definitely be staying on top of it. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you're supporting me. I want to thank you for that. If you want to check me out on Instagram and Twitter, you could do so at the money GPS. If you want to learn how to sell stuff online, you can do so for free in my e-course, the Amazon GPS.com. If you want to learn about the financial system from A to Z, top to bottom, everything is in here. These two books have what you need. Check them out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, themoneygps.com. Hang on a second. Don't go anywhere. You've got to watch this video. It breaks down so much information. Definitely check it out. Click it. I'll see you there.